Now, in the previous round, I intentionally brought the yarn up and over, up and over, up and over, and the result was twisted, twisted, twisted yarns. To continue the Latvian braid, what I'm going to do is do yet another row of purl, only this time I'm going to spiral the other way. And by that I mean I'm going to start with purple, and I'm going to bring the purple under, let me get this out of the way here, I'm going to bring it under the green and yellow. Now I'm going to work with the green, and I'm going to bring the green yarn intentionally under, not over. And again here I'm going to bring the gold yarn separate it out, bring the gold yarn under, under the other two, not over the other two. And again with the purple. And this time the yarn goes under, and this time the yarn goes under, and this time the yarn goes under, and again under. On the previous row, the new yarns were always being brought over the old two. Now they're being brought under the other two. So first round is over. Second round is under. First, and again, under the other two. And manipulating the yarns. Well, that comes with practice. And I suppose if I did this more often, I'd be better at it. Um, stopping each stitch and manipulating the yarns, probably not the most efficient way of doing it. Probably why I limit it to um, an occasional round or two. Um, Ann Modisette has done similar type stitches and she has had very methodical directions on exactly how to work this over and under, but she's only using two yarns in most of her patterns. I'm using three and to some degree um, it's just practice and um, working at it and I just don't work at it. Sorry, I pulled out a view there. And we're going to finish up this half round and voila! There you see it. There you see a braided cast on, which is rolling forward because of a single row of stock in it. Now we have two rows of purl, as opposed to two row, one row of knit. And on the inside, you can see on the inside how the stitches are running columns. What follows now is two rows of stock in it, and then another two rows of braid, and then you continue with stock in it. The alternating rows of stockinette, and, or correction, knit, two knits and purls on the right side create rolling ridges which control the roll. And they control the roll so that the braided cast on rolls forward. This rolls out. The two next rows of knit stitches would roll in. The two next rows of braid would roll out. And the controlled rolling will prevent the your knitting from rolling significantly. Um, some people put a braided cast on and then some rows of garter stitch and then the rows of Latvian braid. Some put one round of Latvian braid. I think a braided cast on, a row of knits, two rows of pearls creating the Latvian braid, two rows of knits creating a recess, and two more rows of Latvian braid. To me, that's the best combination. However, you can play with it and do it yourself. You'll look closely and you'll see that the gold comes here, there's the pearl stitch, there's the gold. Um, the same is true for the green. I think it's just a little easier to see with gold that the pearl stitch is there in the center, creating the center of the braid. A very attractive um, cast on and edging treatment for color work or just for a simple hat. Um, I have on my uh, Ravelry display and on my blog a gold hat.
which was made with two rows of Latvian braid, and the rest of the hat was dead plain. But a little braided edge can turn a simple stockinette hat into something beautiful. I hope that you'll think about trying this, and I'm sure that if you do color work all the time, you'll be able to do this even better than I can.